needs to be insane to do that. Mark Stein, great to see you tonight. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, Tucker. Last summer, we told you about the plight of farmers in South Africa. Hundreds of them have been killed in recent years, some after suffering horrific torture. Instead of protecting the farmers, the government of South Africa has worked to change its country's laws in order to seize their land without compensation. Skin color is a central motivation here. Nobody denies that. Let's be clear about what's happening. This is racist violence, as brutal and horrifying and indefensible as anything that happened under apartheid. The difference is that this time, the Western media are cheering it on. Bloomberg has published articles suggesting that race-based land seizures will somehow supercharge the South African economy, when, of course, the opposite is true. Zimbabwe tried that and became the poorest country in the world. But whatever. Nobody in American journalism wants to hear about it. Last year, the New York Times called this show immoral for even suggesting that farm murders might be a problem. But there's one problem for the Times. Their own interview subjects are getting murdered. Just this past March, the Times profiled a South African farmer called Stephen Smith. Smith's land had been overrun by a mob that built a shanty town and refused to leave. Smith told the newspaper that he'd received death threats, including a threat to, quote, burn him alive. He said he'd been intimidated into selling his land to local government officials. The article featured quotes from political activists openly attacking Smith on the basis of his skin color. Despite that, the Times once again concluded that it's, quote, false to say that farm murders are a real problem. Well, yesterday, four men broke into Smith's home while he was having dinner with his family. They shot him dead and then they left. His was the second farm murder in the Western Cape province in the last month. According to The New York Times, they deserved it. Well, a member in good standing of Wall Street's elite quit his job to travel the country and figure out exactly what was going on in the places where most of us don't visit. He joins us next with a fascinating report on what he found. 